I'm a venture capitalist based in Jerusalem, also a social entrepreneur and business entrepreneur. We are starting a panel with Shira Ruderman, a um, philanthropist and social activist, an executive um, director of the Ruderman Foundation, and a D. Altshuler, who is a friend, and in my mind, one of Israel's rock stars when it comes to social change and social activism. Uh, the topic of our panel is uh, education for social change. And I would like to start with Shira as we think about the education system today and what we're trying to uh, disrupt fundamentally, um, how we can use education as an instrument of change. So first, great being here with you all. And Adi is a dear friend for many years and it's absolute uh, pleasure. I would start by saying that um, part of, um, I think the philosophy and the approach that we have towards education, that everything starts and ends with education. And today's education is not necessarily what we know as you know, knowledge base, um, it's more skills based. So the question is, how do we approach our systems, our physical space, our teachers, our approaches systematically together to enhance change and teach our uh, generations to come, my kids included, to view education as fun place and fun experience and a meaning of fun that makes them curious. So is education is a tool for change, absolutely. But it does not stand alone in what we experience in schools. It has to be a systematic and cultural approach to how we view schools, to how we view school and informal education, to how we view whatever happens in school connected to each other, meaning math and art are not disconnected in the impact of how kids come towards their experience of education. So for me, when I think about education, I think about it as, you know, much more exciting um, and, and more meaningful and fulfilling experience. And I think about, I'll finish by saying that my elementary experience uh, when I grew up in Israel, studied in Israel, was one of the most phenomenal things I remember because it was clear to me that all the experience that I have from one class to another between the interaction between the teacher and the uh, students is not isolated experiences. It's coming together. So the inclusive approach and diverse approach to education in my mind starts with how we see the role of education today in our life. Thank you, Shira. Adi, I want to ask you to dream for a second. And uh, I think as uh, all uh, entrepreneurs are uh, agents of change and are dream catchers, um, I'd like you to share with us how you imagine if we were starting over again from scratch uh, and redesigning uh, the education system with a blank sheet of paper, how would you go about setting it all up for us? Ellie, um... <laughs> That's a very big question, and uh, wow, okay, um, it's never a small one with you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, how do, if I can rebuild the education system all over again? What would I do? With a blank sheet of paper, wow. it's all yours. Oh, wow. okay. So, uh, um, okay, I'll try. Um, I see a system or I see communities, actually. I mean, what is education? Every, education is everything, right? Everything is education. The way we think, the way we perceive life, the way we, we learn, the way we, we see ourselves, the way we believe in everything, our desire, everything uh, is uh, affected, impacted by education. So I see system where, first of all, doesn't divide people. Uh, based on a category or uh, one element in their uh, identity. Uh, it can be anything from, you know, because today we separate. We say, okay, what is your age? Let's put you in a system where you find people like yourself, meaning yourself, you know, you have the same age. 
you have disability, you are deaf. Okay, let's put you together with deaf people with hearing problems. You because you are the same people and you have the same needs, so you you know you'll be in a special system. You are orthodox. You're ultra orthodox. So let's go. You know, let's put you in in a ghetto with people like yourself, and we'll give you the best education. But what you know, it's 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 so um, messed up because the only way you've been perceived every day of your life is from perspective from only one part of who you are. I'm not just you know, I'm not a person with. Down syndrome. It's not what I am. I, I could have Down syndrome, but it's, you know, I'm smart. I'm funny. I'm stubborn. I'm, you know, I, I love soccer. I love cooking. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I have so many things. It's not just one thing. So if I can build again, the system, um, it wouldn't be about, uh, you know, separating, segregating people based on one element saying that now, you know, because as Sheila said, we want diversity. It's an asset, it's not a burden. The only way we can grow, we can be educated is we, if we will be with people that are different with us, from us. And we are different, that's reality, that's life. We don't want society that everybody are the same, that they need to, to kind of, um, you know, beat some kind of, diversity that they have in order to fit in you know every time that you hear the word despite you are in the world of segregation despite the fact that i'm a woman i'm a ceo despite the fact that i'm ethiopian i am a pilot despite the fact that i uh, have i'm you know on on the autism spectrum i can volunteer to the army so if i can rebuild it again it would be an inclusive system where diversity is a privilege and it's, it's an opportunity. And yeah, and then I, I think we can fix everything from there. Thank you, Adi. And, and I'll share with everybody that uh, you've started, that you've, uh, you're have you building a new school system here in Israel called INCLU and making some headway there. Shira, you've been at this for a while. Exactly because uh, of you, because of your support and everything you gave us. Okay, no, none, none of that. Um, Shira, uh, I'm fairly new to to kind of the activist in, in social change through education. I've been at it for seven years. I think you've been at it for much longer. And, you know, what I'd really like to know is, you know, are we making an impact? Is this working? People always view the battleground of education as the opportunity to change the future, engage children while they're young, and make a difference. You know, with your perspective, how do you think we're doing so far in this effort to, to really make social change? So I would say that first I'm an educator myself. So when I look at the question, I look at that with different hats. One is an educator, as a teacher, as a manager. One is a mother of four kids in the education system. And of course, as an activist and philanthropist that fund and support a lot of initiatives in this sphere. Um, and I would like maybe to just say that one of the missing elements um, in how to answer this question is what audience we're looking at. Are we successful? By and large, we can say, yes, we are. Do we make an impact? Of course, you change one person. There's a phrase in the Bible that says you impacted one person, you changed the world. But I think that you and I and probably a few others, when we look at impact, we view it from a question of scale. We view it from a question of systematic change. We try to understand how we as philanthropists that are not responsible, in my view at least, to the public sector and to the solutions, we are partners in it. We have the privilege that maybe others don't have to create initiatives and bubbles of uh, schools and maybe districts to see how pilots and, and ideas work at but their responsibility at the end of the day to run the systematic change in a country or in a city is by the public se sector. Great. So when I view it, and, and I'm thinking about what you said, like we fund 20 years. And sometimes I have moments that I say to myself, 
do we really make a change? Because changing one school, of course, it's amazing. It's important to impact maybe even 4,000 students in a country is outstanding, but we both know it's not everyone. It doesn't also mean that you know we're making the change to be sustainable for the futures. And it doesn't even mean that others can be impacted by it because we're creating this bubble. So my, you know, you ask a dear about her dream and I can't uh, take away her dream because we probably share a lot of the values. Uh, but my dream is that we will stop see educations as initiatives, that we will stop seeing education as startup. Although, you know, you come from the startup world, I invest in the startup world, but I see education as the fundamental platform for a good society. Because this is where we teach our kids how to be good people, to be good citizens, how to think about a change, how to be advocates for a change. How, how can we create that if their experience on the public systematic change is not something that they A, necessarily see the best practice, and B, is something that a lot of other kids like them in the same country or the same city experience. Sure, sure, sure. I'm going to just jump in because we're going to run out of time. I'm going to go to the game show section of this uh, panel. We're going to go rapid fire really quickly. Um, so I want to think big here because that's, that's what we're trying to do. We want to make big change. We want to disrupt something that we're unhappy about. I'd like you just very quickly, each of you, to think of one element which is profoundly going to change in the coming years in education. For me, at Pico Kids, it's all about creating a values based framework, share some of the stuff you address to teach kids not only skills, but values, identity, and things that can fundamentally bind us towards a better future. Adi, you got one minute, 60 seconds, go. So I think if it's about the system and the minister and the CEO currently we're working on it, it's about you know flexibility, autonomy, and uh, trust in the system. And in terms of the content and the value, it's about creating a place and meaning for every student so uh, we can um, bring compassion um, to be the core essence of, uh, of the communities. Um, I'm sitting in my office in Tel Aviv. There's a protest outside, which might be providing some call for action for social change. Shira, 60 seconds, what's the one big element that you think will change in the coming years? I think that we experiencing during this COVID, you know, few changes to come. The hybrid models, when we talk about being physical and reimagine experience virtually, I think that we have to uplift the positions of the teachers. You know, we have to talk about excellency, meaning not to compromise about the quality, the diversity, the inclusion uh, that we want to see because it trickles down to how our kids growing up. So I think that you know, it's excellency, it's reimagining, it's some passion. I think we have to bring the passion and the, the value base and the skill base back to our system. Thank you. So uh, we're in the game show section. So I'm going to talk about a $100 million prize. And it's a challenge I've given to Adi in the past. And uh, Shira and I discussed beforehand if I was writing a $100 million check right now and you could spend it, but you had to spend it right away to make a really big difference because we want to make change now, Adi, what would it be? What would you do with a $100 million? I refuse, I refuse to answer this question. Okay, I'll raise it to a billion dollars. What would you do right <laughs> now? <laughs> I'm a big failure when it comes to thinking, you know, <laughs> and about not money. Um, but I can tell you this. I think, uh, you know, this is really hard times talking about the protest outside your window. People lost everything they had here and in other countries, of, of course. And, you know, despair and, and feeling, you know, this, all this stress, it's, 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 it's hard, and, you know. And education gives me hope because there are thousands of amazing people um, that are there they are the teachers, they are the principals, they are the people that come, that wake up every day, regardless of the money that they, you know, they, they don't get money, and regardless of anything, just to try to fix and to help people in order to change this, this, 
this society and other societies. And I think rather that rather than politics, politics, sorry, education is the only way. So, uh, you know, I think listening to, to, to people on field, that's the best way to go. And uh, thank you. You didn't spend any money. I just gave you Shira. What are you going to do with a hundred million dollars today? I think it's a proof. Uh, this answer, it's a proof to my mind that education is not just about money. You can spend a billion dollar probably in a few minutes. I can make some decisions to spend a billion dollar and it would not create a change. It's to redesign and to rebuild how we look at that. I truly think, I also think it's fair to say that education is not necessarily a sustainable model. It's not that if you invest money, you solve the solution. It's constant new generations, new kids coming in. And the other thing I would say, where? Are we spending it in the public system in Israel or in the day schools in the Jewish communities around the world that probably most likely would never be sustainable models. Uh, so we really need to rethink how our education system looks like in the future to try to make it more impactful and meaningful experience so it will you know be a mirror to the values and the change that we want to see as a society great so we just have one minute and with your permission i'm just going to wrap up and say thank you both of you uh, my view uh, and the work i've been doing at pico kids is that everyone is equally underprivileged today when it comes to a 21st century education we really have to take our most creative thinkers, uh, reimagine the system, and hopefully build a framework um, for a better future and a better outcome for everybody. So thank you very much, both of you, and looking forward to hearing your and, dreams. And Ali, thank you for being such an amazing inspiration and such a big supporter, not for me and what we do, but for so many people, especially in Jerusalem, but all over the country. Thank you, and thank you, Shira. Thank you, Adi. And I hope we can all catch our dreams and make a difference. So thank you. Amen. Thank you.